Chairman, but I believe he's going yeah, to. We're, we're, <coughs> All right, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it's a May 17th meeting of the Board of Sewer Commissioners, and the purpose of the meeting tonight is going to be for discussion with water warriors. Uh, I could have a roll call. Donna Bronk, present. Peter Dunlop, present. Jim Giberti, present. Okay, we uh, have no meeting minutes you know, for this one, and we'll go right into Water Warriors. Gentlemen, you have the floor. Thank you. Good evening. Um, thanks for coming in today to uh, listen to us presentation by Water Warriors. Today what we're gonna talk about is implementing our technologies for the Wareham Water Pollution Control Plant. And specifically, we'll address some of the benefits that will accrue from these technologies. So the problem that right now that uh, is present is the fact that we have nutrients that are in the wastewater, and there is a requirement that the nutrient, the total amount of nutrients be limited in the effluent, and that limits the capacity of the plant. Um, if we can remove more of the nutrients, the nitrogen and phosphorus, we can increase the throughput through the plant because it is limited by the total amount of nitrogen that can go into the buzzard bay right now. So, and, and of course nutrients, when they go into the Bay Area, they lead to algae blooms, and this is a major issue, I think, with not only this location, but also in many other locations across the country. So the technologies we're gonna talk about today will enable the plant to remove the nutrients from the wastewater in addition to treating the wastewater. Next slide. So the proposed technology, one of the proposed technology is this microbubble aeration. And what microbubble aeration does is it simply is a technology that allows you to take the air and create many small bubbles from it. Typically, if you look at aeration systems in wastewater treatment plants, including the one that Wareham has right now, you're creating bubbles of, the minimum size of the bubble is about one millimeter. So if you look at the diagram on the left-hand side, that is one millimeter size bubble. If I take that size bubble and break it up into micro bubbles, which you see in the right-hand side, you're gonna get about 8,000 more micro bubbles. So we're taking the same amount of air instead of breaking it up into millimeter size bubbles, which is what is being done right now, we can create micro bubbles that are very small. And what that does, it, it creates many more bubbles. And by creating many more bubbles, we're creating a lot of area through which the oxygen can dissolve in the water. So this is one of the major things here is that we're increasing the surface area through which oxygen goes into the water, and that's what we want because that's what you need for biological treatment. Now the graph that is shown on the bottom left that you see, this is the, on the vertical axis, we are plotting the time it takes for the bubbles to rise through five feet depth of water. So the time it takes for the bubble to rise is what is being plotted, and the size of the bubble is on the x-axis. So if you go to a millimeter size bubble, which is on the right-hand side, you see the point is almost at zero. And what that means is that it is zero, it's not zero, it's seconds, but it is very small to be seen on the graph when you plot it with minutes. So the vertical axis is in minutes, so that's the time it takes for the bubbles to rise. But as the size of the bubble goes down, you see the graph turning upwards, and that is at 50 microns. So this is the 50 micron right there, and that's when the graph begins to turn up. The bubbles we are creating are about 30 microns average size. So when you at 30 microns average size, the time the bubble takes to rise is going to be in several minutes, if not hours. So now you have many more bubbles, 8,000 more bubbles, and they're not just rising through the water and going in a few seconds, they're staying in the water long enough to be able to give the oxygen into the water. So we've got two things going on. Number one, many, many more bubbles. Number two, they're taking a long time to rise through the water. And the reason they take a long time is because the weight of the bubble, the weight of the air in the bubble is balanced by the buoyancy. So the bubbles just don't go rise up in a few seconds and they're gone, which is what aeration systems are doing right now they're gonna take a slow time to rise, and as they rise eventually, they're gonna have more time, sometimes hours, um, and at least minutes in order to give the oxygen. So that allows to give a lot more oxygen into the water for the same amount of air that we are putting into the water. That's a major gain, because without oxygen, you cannot treat the water. The more oxygen you can put, the more benefits you have. The other benefit is that you need a lot of oxygen 
to oxidize the ammonia to nitrate because the ammonia in the water is being oxidized and that consumes a huge amount of oxygen. If you cannot get the oxygen in the water effectively, you cannot remove ammonia from the water. And that is one of the limitations that Vareham has right now is that the ammonia limits coming out are high enough that you cannot put more than 1.5 or, or less than one MGD through the process. If you can decrease the ammonia uh, amount coming out by oxidizing it more, more effectively, you can put more water through the, through the same plant. So that is a limitation because the total nitrogen is being limited by the requirement, the compliance that it has to meet. So that is the advantages we have got. Next slide. Now this is the diagram that shows how this technology will get implemented in the aeration basin, in the existing aeration basin at the Wareham plant. So you see the, in this case, we're gonna take the water that is leaving the, the aeration basin and we're gonna basically pump it backwards. So if you see the pump down there, um, can you point to the pump down there? On the, yeah, that's the pump. So it's gonna take the water coming out of the process, take it and then it flows through the absorption aerator. That is a device that is shown on the bottom left there. And what it does is as the water flows to the device, it sucks in air from the ambient air. It's like a venturi. You know, as you're having a higher water flow, it sucks in air. So in this case, that air is then broken up into microbubbles, and then these microbubbles get injected back into the basin through the nozzles. So what it does is, in the area which says aeration basin with moving super my biomedia, that's where the biomedia is gonna be, and I'm gonna talk about biomedia in a minute, but it is going to create a high level of oxygen in the water because we are taking water and air, breaking it up into micro bubbles and putting them back into the basin. So this provides a very high oxygen transfer. At the same time, it does not require any blowers. One of the major problems with aeration is that it requires big blowers, they make a lot of noise, they require a huge amount of maintenance, and they're not very efficient. This requires no blowers, all it is requiring is a pump, which is much more efficient, and it is outside the tank. If the pump is sitting on the outside of the tank, it's not in the water. So in this case, we can inject a fair amount of air plus water back in the basin, and the nozzles that I was talking about are not at the bottom of the basin, they are about midway in the depth of water. So if the depth of water is five feet, the nozzle will be about two and a half feet down in the water. So that allows you to shoot the water down and the air downwards into the basin. The bubbles go deep into the basin, they rise up slowly, and they provide oxygen, they provide mixing, and that is the absorption aerator that we are talking about. No blowers, just a pump, and recycle of the water. Excuse me. Yes. But, now where is the pump in the, that venturi located? So this is all outside the tank. Outside the tank. They're okay. all outside the tank. The only thing in the water, midway in the depth of the water, is the header on which the nozzles are located. You see the header there? Yep. That's the only thing in the water. So okay. it's easy to maintain. There's nothing in the water except the nozzles. And essentially the pump is outside, the absorption aerator is outside, sucking in air from ambient, does not require any blowers, provides oxygen, very small bubbles, take a long time to rise, and that is the absorption aerator we're talking about. So we did a calculation as to how much oxygen, how much pumping power we would need, and what we came up with was the total electrical cost at 15 cents per kilowatt hour, which is the cost of power in Wareham in this area, it's gonna be about $59,000 a year. So that is the number for the aeration basin that is on the right-hand side in the table that is based on the calculation, uh, assuming the flow and so forth in this case. So basically you get that number $59,000 a year. That's your electrical cost to run the, the pump, the pumps, the two pumps in that are shown in the diagram. That's gonna be the total cost to run at 15 cents uh, per kilowatt hour in this case. Now you're spending right now for the same amount of aeration, you're spending a m lot more money in the blowers right now. So there's gonna be a savings by using this technology, and I'll talk about savings in a minute, but today you're gonna to save electrical power every year that you use this process instead of, the, instead of the normal blowers that you have in the plant. Okay, next slide. So now, this technology of absorption aerator that we are talking about is not something which is not a new invention in the sense that this is not the first time it has been implemented. This has been tested independently by the American Society of Civil Engineers. 
and there's a report. And if you look at the American Society of Civil Engineers, they have a very detailed methodology of testing any aeration system that any company comes up with. And this methodology has to be run by an ASEC approved entity, uh, which is like a company that is approved by ASEC in this case. So we have this technology tested by this independent company many, many years ago, and they measured the oxygen absorption efficiency, and they said, yeah, this device creates uh, an efficiency of 19% as opposed to the 6% that normal aeration does. So three times more efficient, and this is not what we are saying. This is being said in an independent, independently run testing by the American Society of Civil Engineers, by an entity that followed their methodology, which is very detailed. If you look at the ASC methodology of testing, it's like a book, you know? They wrote a whole book on how this testing should be done and, and the procedure for it. So it's not something that you can just do yourself. It has to be an ASC approved entity, and that's the testing that was done by this approved entity, and that's what they found. The second thing is that we have implemented this technology at full scale. Uh, there, was a, there was a big lagoon in Wisconsin that was having great problems in treating wastewater. So we put this technology in place there at full scale, and, and I would just want to talk briefly about that application so you can see how this was implemented. So this is a lagoon, and there's a lot of language here, but I'll try to highlight the points. So this is a lagoon in Wisconsin, and this lagoon was getting wastewater, and basically the water was just flowing across the lagoon. It was uh, allowing oxygen from the air, to get into the water, and there was some treatment being done. The wastewater was then going to a treatment plant. So this lagoon was being used as a pretreatment device, basically. But what they found was, so this was a 75,000 gallons per day water flow, and the lagoon is about 640 feet long and about 246 feet wide. And, it's, and the depth of the lagoon is about nine to 10 feet. So this was the size, it's a very large lagoon, and I'll show you a picture of that in a minute, but basically a very large lagoon through which water was flowing. And the problem they were having was they had aeration going on, and this aeration was, was consuming a lot of horsepower. A lot of power was being consumed. And they had a lot of uh, horsepower being consumed, a lot of electrical energy going in. But they were unable to treat the water to meet the compliance. So they were paying almost $70,000 a year in, um, in basically surcharges because they were unable to meet the compliance on the exit water. That was the problem they had. And they had almost three feet of sludge sitting at the bottom of the lagoon. So nine feet of depth, three feet of sludge. So one third of the depth of water was occupied by sludge <coughs> that was just sitting at the bottom and it wasn't doing, it wasn't being treated. So that was the situation they had. So we came in and we installed, in this case in two phases, um, the objective of this design is, was to reduce the BOD, increase the mixing, um, basically, uh, you know, the solids that were in the water, treat the solids in the water, adjust the pH in this case, treat the ammonia, and, and reduce the sludge. So those are the objectives. So we install in phase one, two 500 gallons per minute aerators, instead of, you know, the flow of water was 500 GPM in each one of those two aerators, and we were, and each aerator was using a pump, which was 15 horsepower. And then in phase two, we installed two additional aerators, so there were a total of four aerators, and in phase two, the, the, the pumps were 20 horsepower. So when you look at the total amount of horsepower, we went from, basically, we saved them from uh, you know, 135 horsepower, we now uh, came down to 70 horsepower. So we saved them, in this case, almost $48,000 a year. And um, so that was electrical energy now that they were saving because of the pump as opposed to the, the blowers. Next slide. And we were also able to achieve the, uh, the um, BODs of about 35 milligrams a liter, ammonia less than one milligram a liter, phosphorus less than three, and nitrate less than one. So what this did was it allowed them to come back into compliance. And it saved them almost $48,000 a year in addition to that, if you look at just electrical energy. It also decreased the sludge depth at the bottom because it was oxidizing the sludge because of oxygen going all the way to the bottom, which they were not able to get otherwise. So this was the this is the picture of the lagoon, and if you look at the on the right hand on the left hand picture, you see the water coming in on the right hand side. That's the pipe coming in from the lagoon. Can you point to the picture on the left? Yeah, that pipe right there. The water is being sucked into from the lagoon. This is the pump right there, 
and then the water flows through the absorption aerator. That is a four inch aerator, you see the blue one there. And then that entrains the air, it creates the micro bubbles, and they go back in the lagoon. And they inject it back in the lagoon. That's exactly what I was showing you before. And the right hand side is another picture of the same process. The pump, you see the blue pump sitting there on the concrete pad, the air coming in, the water coming in, and the water going back. So this system was installed. Uh, this saved them 70 horsepower every year. This saved them $68,000 a year electrical cost. This brought them back into compliance. The ammonia levels were less than one milligram a liter. So this is the, this was a full scale implementation that demonstrated that this technology can do the job that we are talking about. And it has also been tested by ASC, and it is already installed at full scale. So essentially, there, it's not, this is not, the Wareham is not the first installation. And we also have the same system, the absorption aerator and the media, I'm gonna talk about the media in a minute, already running in, in a treatment, small treatment plants, and I'll talk about that in a minute. So let me move to the next slide. So this is the biomedia now. The biomedia is essentially like a football on the left-hand side. It is a cage, a plastic cage, inside which you see the black foam that is sitting inside. And this material allows the bacteria to grow on the surface. Now we have a very special coating on it that allows the bacteria to coat the foam material and create a very high concentration of biomass on this football. And this football is moving around in the water. Okay, so that's how the process is being done. So as we create the mixing that I talked about earlier, these footballs are in that mixing zone, they're moving around, they're growing a lot of biomass, and they enable much better water treatment in this case than you can get from just without the footballs in this case. So they're easy to install, they're big enough, they, they, they're not difficult to contain because they, they are six, almost six by eight inches, eight inches this direction and six inches this direction, like an oval shaped. Um, and essentially, they move through the water and they enable much higher biomass concentrations. So to give you an idea, in a typical aeration basin like Wareham has right now, your concentration of biomass is about 2,500 to 3,000 at the most milligrams per liter. The concentration of biomass in these footballs is about 10 times higher. So you can have as much as 40,000 milligrams a liter biomass concentration as opposed to the 2,000 or 2,500 you have in the normal basin. By having a lot more biomass now in the basin while you're running the aeration and so forth, you can treat the water to a much greater extent. You can also remove the nutrients at the same time. And I'll show you how the, it removes the nutrients, but that is the advantage, yes. Do these uh, biomasses, are they affected by grease? Yeah, so what happens is that when grease comes in, so when you put the football in the water for the very first time, there's a special coating that we provide on the football. And what that coating does, is it basically allows biomass to form a film within a few hours. So the biomass gets attracted to the football, coats it completely, and then as the grease comes along, grease is a food for the organisms that are on this media. So they consume the grease, actually. But they, the grease won't overwhelm it and just coat it. No, no, because what the bacteria, what the bacteria does, especially when you have a high concentration of bacteria like this, the bacteria produces a surfactant, and this is naturally produced by the bacteria. And the reason for the surfactant is exactly that. The, the, the grease is emulsified by the biosurfactant that is produced by the bacteria. And this is something that nature does. Nature has come up with a solution of having grease or other food particles, they got emulsified, the, the, the oils and greases are emulsified because of the biosurfactant that is produced naturally by the bacteria, and then it becomes food to be assimilated by the bacteria. That's how bacteria is able to assimilate stuff that otherwise would not be able to assimilate because that is, the grease is not soluble in water. It's insoluble in water. So it is, it is able to emulsify it through the biosurfactant, make it solubilized, and then consume it through the, through the membranes, the cell membranes, and so forth that it has got. So, so basically, I'm sorry. So basically that allows it to consume the grease as a food source in this case. So essentially, these, these footballs are very easy to install. You throw them into the, into the basin. They're not attached to anything. They're just moving around. They're just moving around and, uh, and essentially, um, sorry, my phone, can't switch it off somehow. So basically, um, 
they allow the nitrification, denitrification of the nutrients and treat the BOD in this case as well. And, and they do a very effective job because they increase the concentration of biomass significantly over what you have in a suspended culture. So this is a big advantage in terms of this uh, technology that we're talking about, very cost effective because they allow the treatment to be done much more, much faster than you can do without the footballs. Next slide. Now the reason why the, uh, they remove the nutrients is on the left hand side you see the piece of foam inside the football. The football is oval shaped and the foam piece is sitting inside. And on the inner side of this foam is where there's lack of oxygen. And that's where the nitrate is getting denitrified to nitrogen gas. So on the outside of the foam, the ammonia gets oxidized to nitrate because of dissolved oxygen. And on the inside of the foam, the nitrate gets reduced down to nitrogen gas. So we're getting rid of the ammonia from the wastewater by doing this nitrification and denitrification at the same time. And so while this football is moving around, it is removing nutrients from the wastewater. It's also removing phosphorus at the same time. So that's how the nutrients are treated effectively that otherwise don't get treated. And that's why you have ammonia limits uh, coming out in the wastewater effluent. And they, we are trying to reduce that for Wareham because if the ammonia limits go down, you can treat more wastewater in the same plant. That's the limitation that they've got right now. So this is the mechanism by which it can do that. Uh, and there are all these footballs moving around and they are all doing the same kind of thing in this process. Next slide. So this is to show you that the super biomedia, this moving media, this is not the first time we're using it. We actually have what is called a small treatment plant called the advanced septic tank. So we're not only supplying these aeration systems and, and moving media, we also supply what is called an advanced septic tank called the next gen septic. And we install them in the state of Kentucky right now. And we are also applying for National Sanitation Foundation approval right now. So we're gonna be running a test for six, seven months right now in the Wareham testing facility right here, which, uh, which we visited this, this afternoon. And basically what, what it is is, so we have been running, we have been selling these advanced septic tanks in the Kentucky market right now, in the state of Kentucky. We have over 30 of these tanks installed behind houses. So if you don't have a sewer line connection and all you have is a septic tank, the septic tank is very polluting. It puts out nitrogen, it puts out bad water, it goes into the leach field, the leach field gets clogged, and then basically the, the water doesn't get treated. So this has been a situation all over the country. There are all, over two million septic fields that have, been, that have got clogged now. And the homeowners have no place to go because the only choice they have is to dig out the field and change the soil. That can cost over $25,000. Or if you don't replace the field and your field has failed, then you can't sell your house. So a lot of homeowners are caught now not knowing what to do because they don't have any more land. You know, if you have more land, you can use the, the extra land to open up another field. But that also will get clogged over time and then you may have no place to go. So this is a problem. There are two million of those in this country. So what we are doing is we are selling these advanced septic tanks that clean the water. And then when the clean water goes into a clogged field, it opens up the field. So we can resurrect these clogged fields. So in the state of Kentucky, that we are installing the systems, places where homeowners have no place to go. We install our system, it puts out clean water, it goes on the clogged field, it opens up the field. Or in many cases, we are allowed to put the water into the lake or into a river, and that's what we're doing. So we have over 30 systems sold in the state of Kentucky. We're looking for NSF approval right now so we can sell it nationally, not just in Kentucky. So this is some of the data just to show you. So we have moving media, super biomedia inside the tank. We have the aeration system inside the tank. So this is like a small treatment plant that goes behind the house. And it does the treatment of the wastewater, the ammonia and all the phosphorus and the BOD, and it puts out clean water. So this is the data, this is just a snapshot that I just copied from the file. I have like 30 or more of these entries there, but it shows you the influent data coming in. The BOD was 475. Um, can you go to the left hand side with the four, yeah, the BOD is 475, the total suspended solid is 1,000 almost, the ammonia is 15.7 milligrams a liter, phosphorus is 2.8, the pH is 8.0, and there's a lot of E. coli in the water. The total coliform is very high. If you go to the right hand side, this is the effluent now, 9.6 BOD, uh, TSS is below detection limits, that means no suspended solids, the water is clear, the ammonia is 4.4 milligrams a liter, Phosphorus is 0.3, and the pH is 6.7, and the 
and basically the quality forms are very, very small. So this is what the effluent comes out. So we, are, we, are, we have installed the systems, there are 30 of those running. Um, they are basically a, a small scale representation of the aeration system that I just talked about and the moving media that I mentioned to you just now. So these are already running in the field right now. And we are, we are selling them every day and the, the number of installations going up. We get about you know, six or seven requests almost on a, on a weekly basis. And then we, uh, we install these. It takes a little bit of time to manufacture them and to get them installed. It can take about 10, 15, 20 days, 30 days to get a permit from the state of Kentucky. So there's some delay there, yes. How much is the cost for these? For so we sell, we sell these systems with the, we have an ozone system right. at the end that, de, that dis basically uh, disinfects the water completely, okay? So we sell the entire system with the tank, with the ozone system for $17,000 and it takes $4,000 to install it. So by $21,000, the homeowner has a new septic tank that puts out clean water that can be used for irrigation or can be used, can be put into the creek or can be discharged into the Ohio River. All that is possible. So you don't need a leach field. If you have a leach field, it if it's clogged, it'll open up the leach field. So uh, for under $20,000 or about $21,000, you can get, if you have a, le if it's going to a soil field, you don't need the ozone unit, so the price comes down to $16,000. For $16,000 and $4,000 installation cost, for $20,000, you get a system that is pretty intelligent, runs without any intervention, sits under the ground behind the house, and puts out clean water. So that's the technology that we are, we are basically trying to bring to other states, but we have to jump through the hoops of getting NSF and all that, and, uh, and that's, you know, basically NSF takes about six, seven months to get. So that's what we are going through right now. Where are you in that process? So we are submitting, the unit is gonna come, we just met George Hausfelder this afternoon. The, the, he's got a piece of land ready for us. And essentially, we're gonna be, uh, the unit is gonna come here like mid-June or end of June, and then it's gonna be running for six, seven months. And uh, we, they're gonna test it for NSF 40, 245, which is nutrients, and 350, which is recycle of water. So that's the level of testing they're gonna go through. But, but right now, in the state of Kentucky, we don't require NSF, but this data is from the state of Kentucky. So this is something that is basically obtained from installations we've already done in the, in, the, in the state of Kentucky right now. Is this the only other state you're trying to get into right now? No, once we get NSF, then we can get into all of the southern states. So we have almost like 14, 15 states in the country that we can sell the system, you know, basically once we get NSF. Then there is other states like, uh, for example, like in this state, we need to uh, basically, after we get NSF, we still need to put in experimental approval. We might need to put in 10, 15 system we can sell to demonstrate the technology to the state here. And they need that on top of NSF. So N NSF is not the only thing. So you have to do that. And then they give you full approval, which means you can sell many more systems here. <coughs> so we have to go through, the, through some process here as well, you know. And when we talked to George about how to do that and how to get that moving forward, you know, so that that allows us to sell in this in this state, for example, you know. Next slide. So this is just an analysis we did, where we ran through the numbers, uh, assuming certain concentrations of BOD and and TKN that that um, that we got uh, for the plant running right now, and basically we came up with the scenario that. If you use our, this media and this aeration system, your cost of electrical cost, just the electrical cost, to run that will be like $73,619. And if you increase the flow rate to 2 MGD, the left-hand side is 1.5 MGD, right-hand side is 2 MGD, your cost is about $98,000 a year. For the electrical cost to run the pump, for example, uh, in this case I was talking about, that's the cost that we are calculating based on the flow rates and the BODs and so forth and TKN coming in, which is the data that we had from the plant right now. Anyway, so, so what we are proposing here, next slide. So the, now this is the Mass CC grant that we have, that has been awarded now, and uh, we are submitting a revised budget now because this grant was written to include the equalization basin. So now we are revising the proposal, uh, and we just talked to Guy about this uh, this morning, uh, which will take out the equalization basin uh, because there's some concern about orders and so forth. And we're going to expand on the 
data analysis portion of it uh, and the collection data. Because so instead of trying to do the aeration basin and equalization basin, we're gonna take the equalization basin out, just do the aeration basin only, and that'll reduce the cost, as well as do more data analysis because what Mass CEC wants is they want um, essentially an evaluation of this technology over a certain length of time. And they are, it's like a one year project, so we'll be collecting data for six, seven months, and then analyzing the data to show how much energy we're saving and documenting it for a real plant like Wareham, so they can get real data when the flow is going up and down and everything is changing, how much energy are you really saving? And the state wants to then take this example and then try to save energy in other plants in the state, because right now the state is spending a lot of money in running these wastewater treatment plants, paying for electrical energy, and they can save that. So that's what they're trying to do. There's additional savings here, by the way. One of the largest savings we get from this technology that uh, we can get from this process is reduction of sludge. So right now, you know, for example, Wareham is spending almost $430,000 to handle the sludge and then dispose the sludge, okay? And this sludge is a big issue right now. So a lot of money is being spent in, in disposal of the sludge right now. If we can say this, so one of the things about this biomedia is, and I think Guy must have mentioned this to you, is that when you throw the biomedia in the water, it grows the biomass on it, but the biomass stays on the media. It doesn't go in the water. So you don't end up wasting a lot of sludge. So your sludge production rate goes down. So if you can reduce the sludge production rate by 30%, that's one third of $430,000 you can save. That's more than $100,000, just in sludge production, yes. You, you estimate that uh, we'll reduce the sludge by 30%? Yes. Now how often will we have to change these uh, footballs? So the footballs never have to be changed. I mean, they don't biodegrade. They don't the, wear out. They don't wear out, and they don't get consumed by the bacteria. They don't get hampered by the, the water. So basically, we, um, you know, they, they, we, have, we have data to show that they'll last more than 10 years, but typically nothing happens to them even after 10 years. So basically what the football is is the ecosystem by itself. The biomass grows, the biomass dies, the biomass grows again, it dies, and so it basically does that repeatedly, just like any life cycle, and it just keeps moving around the water. That's how the football is. So essentially, the sludge production now is re decreased because the sludge that would have been in the water now is growing on the football itself. That is the main, so sludge reduction is a major, you know, is a major gain in, in, in all the problems that you get with sludge, you know, trying to dispose the sludge off, is a major gain from using this technology, is the reduction of sludge. And this has been documented, this is nothing new, this has been shown by other types of medias and so forth, there's been, there's lots of papers being written, this has been going on for many, many years, it has been shown by, you know, lots of publications, lots of real data, lots of operating data, that if you put biomedia in the water, you can save the amount of sludge, you can reduce the amount of sludge you're producing. So what we are claiming is nothing new, it's not you know, something that we are saying for the first time that nobody's heard about, it's just this media does a very good job of holding the biomass. So it does a better job of reducing the sludge than let's say, you know, typically the biomedia that people are using are like one inch in size, and it's like little pieces of plastic that stay in the water, and this football is six by eight inches, so it's easier to contain, and it does a much better job. So that's the real gain. But the concept of reducing sludge by using biomedia is not new. This has been around for a long time. It's been documented by the Water Pollution Control you know, Association and by publications and by real plants. So this is a known idea, but how you do it is what is different here. You know? And, and we, we have demonstrated that by using the same technology in the septic tanks that I was talking about. So the septic tanks don't produce as much sludge. You don't have to keep pumping them out as much as you do for a septic tank, for example where the sludge, or, or a normal aeration system, where the sludge grows, and then it settles down, and then you have to pump it out. So this is a big reduction, um, you know, this is a big reduction in cost in, in, the, in, in running the process, for example, the, 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 the Wareham process is the reduction of sludge. Now, stirring up this sludge, are we gonna increase our odor problem? No, no, the odor problem is only because if you don't have enough dissolved oxygen in the water, you're gonna get smell. 
That is just the nature so of the process. So we're going to reduce our older problem as well. Yeah, you, you're going to have the, the aeration system I was talking about puts a lot of oxygen in the water because of the small bubbles and all that stuff. Right. So what it does is it does not allow the water to become septic. And if you can prevent the water from getting septic, you're not going to get any odors. If you get septic, you're going to get a lot of odors. You get a, you know, hydrogen sulfide, ammonia, you get lots of other stuff. And that's what creates the problem with any wastewater. If you let it sit in a tank and no aeration, you're going to smell. It's going to smell really badly. And it just takes a hot summer day to really make it smell really bad. And that's what is happening with the equalization basin. You know, I think that Guy must have mentioned to you that they maintain a very low level in the water so that oxygen can get it from the air. Because if you increase the level of the water in the equalization basin and there's no aeration there, and this is raw sewage coming in, then it is going to start stinking. And that's what they've seen already in that case. Now, we were proposing to put aeration there. But Guy, uh, basically, the reason we're withdrawing it now, because there's a fear that that might create some smell because we're aerating the water and so forth. But, you know, because when raw wastewater comes in and you start aerating for the very first time, of course, there'll be some smell created. But then out, once the oxygen gets in, it will not smell anymore after that. But there's some initial smell that'll come out because the water is coming from a sewage line. So basically, we're going to look at that later on. Right now, what we're doing is we're just simply concentrating on the aeration basin and spending more time to document the technology, to document the energy savings, document the sludge reduction that will go in a report to Mass CEC so they can then apply this technology to other plants in the state because power cost in the state is pretty high. You know, the cost of power is pretty high here, 15 cents per kilowatt hour. So the state is spending lots of money right now in wastewater treatment plants. They're looking to reduce the, that, that cost somehow. And the reason they funded this project for $150,000 is because this will demonstrate that to them, and they can take that report and then try to implement this across uh, other plants, you know. So that's the whole driving force. So anyway, this, so I won't go through all the numbers here, but this is a, a revised proposal that we are now preparing that will go in next Tuesday that um, Guy mentioned to Mass CEC for modifying the project by taking out the equalization basin and then putting more data analytics to sort of uh, uh, define the project for the aeration basin. Okay, so basically... Um, uh, what we are saying is the total project cost that is going to be in this case is going to, for the, on a one-year project case is going to be about $584,000. So keep that number in mind. That's the total project cost. That includes the cost of equipment, includes the cost of design and engineering, includes the cost of data analytics, data gathering, includes the time it takes to uh, analyze the data and put a report and do all of the other things. So the total project cost is about $580,000 in this case. Next slide. So the way it's broken down is the microbubble aeration is going to cost over $160,000. The moving super biomedia that we just talked about is going to be 133. dollars The total cost of retrofitting um, the equipment cost is about $293,000. Uh, basically, the cost to mass CC, because with the mass CC grant, the cost to Wareham is going to be $166,346 because one, remember 150 is coming from Mass CEC, plus is gonna pay for a few other things. So basically, the cost to the WPCF is gonna be $166,346. And for this expenditure, basically, um, they're gonna get a project that is valued at about $584,000, in this case, in terms of time and energy and all the en engineering and all that, but they're only paying $166,346 with, for all the equipment and, um, and getting all the benefits in this case. So basically, when you look at the overall picture, next slide, in this case, um, we are providing, Water Warriors is providing the design engineering and, and, and the data analytics and so forth to, for, the, for the mass CEC project. We are providing almost $156,987 in terms of our time and, 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 and the, the, uh, the cost that we would incur in terms of the hours that we are spending to get all this project done and get the data collected and analytics and so forth and write the, uh, the, the final report to CEC. And that's about almost 29.5% of the total project cost. So basically, we are putting in one-third almost of our money on this project already in this case. 
Now, it offers Wareham an annual saving that exceeds $230,000. And how do we get the $230,000? Because we are taking the electrical cost, the chemical cost, and the sludge disposal cost. And if you add them up, they are more than $230,000 in that cost. And it gives back a pay payback period to Wareham of about nine months or less. So this project, you know, you spend $166,000 and you're gonna get back the money in less than nine months. In fact, less than nine months because your total cost of electrical, chemical, and sludge disposal exceeds $230,000 right now. So there's gonna be savings that you're gonna get back. You're gonna get back your money in less than nine months in this case. Now, the cost savings are coming in aeration energy. They're gonna come in nutrient reduction so you can put more throughput through the plant and you're gonna get less cost of sludge handling. So all of those costs are gonna be incurred, are, are gonna be saved in this case that you are incurring right now in the current plant running. Next slide. Okay, now, the, so basically, the major thing that we wanna emphasize here, and the, the pie chart on the left-hand side is really a breakdown of where the energy in a typical plant is going. Almost 54% goes in aeration energy, the cost of running the blowers. We're gonna save about 40% of that cost. And then there's gonna be less sludge production, as I mentioned to you, and this production of, less production of sludge is gonna save you a fair amount of money itself in, by its own way. So when you add it all up, you're saving a huge amount of money that you are right now paying for sludge disposal, you're paying for aeration cost, electrical cost, in other words, and you're paying for chemical costs. So there'll be gonna be some savings accruing from all of this, as I mentioned to you, and that's gonna be a payback of less than nine months. Next slide. And there, there are many other benefits that we have not talked about in this case. Number one, it's very easy to install this technology. Uh, the, the football just have to be thrown into the basin. Um, you don't have to really um, do any infrastructure, do any civil jobs in this case. Of course, for the pump and for the recycle of the water, there is some piping to be installed, but very minimal. It's not a major project installation cost. They can be retrofitted in the ex existing process, that's what we are proposing here. Um, you also get, um, you know, in, basically you have less expenditure in maintaining the alkalinity. Right now you're spending money on chemicals to bring alkalinity in the water. Then here, because we're stripping out the CO2, the carbon dioxide, you didn't, don't need as much chemical to change the alkalinity of the water. And you, without alkalinity, you can't do denitrification. So that's something you get. Um, essentially, we can remove the nutrients and the nitrogen and phosphorus, and the major thing is it'll allow the capacity of the plant to go up. Right now, you're limited in capacity because your nitrogen limits are, are there. Now you can put more throughput of water, and that'll allow you to use the plant at a higher flow rate, and maybe 1.5 MGD, 2 MGD in this case as well. Next slide. So these are some of the uh, benefits that we see. When you compare the water water technology against other technologies out there, the plastic media I mentioned to you, in the moving bioreactors and so forth, and there are some significant advantages, and those are the green blocks you see, you know, in terms of denitrification, phosphorus removal, BOD removal efficiency being high, space requirements being very low, sludge generation being low, and operating costs being low, and maintenance costs being low. Because we don't have any blowers, we don't have a high maintenance cost. So these are some of the benefits. When you look at other technologies, they have some disadvantages, and those are shown by the red blocks. What the, and I won't go through all of the different technologies, but those are what are being used right now in the wastewater treatment. So that's pretty much my presentation this, after, this evening. Could, could you go back to the slide where you had the cost breakdowns? Yes. Next one back. Yeah. Yes. Now this is the equipment cost we're talking about. Could we implement the football and not do the aeration? Yeah, the problem with that is that uh, the, uh, the footballs are gonna so basically yeah. accumulate biomass, and that's what they do. So once you accumulate the biomass, you need a lot of dissolved oxygen okay. to so keep they, the- So they have to go together. Yeah, otherwise the biomass will die. And then you begin to get other problems with, the, with the, the effectiveness of the system doesn't work because if you can't provide dissolved oxygen, you can't allow this biomass that is on the football to survive. So that is the other problem you've got there. The, the total refit. Mm -hmm. 
is 293.346 for the aeration basin. Is that's the 293? Yeah. In the old proposal, we had the equalization basin. That's no longer there now. We are replacing that with more and data analytics and so forth, and we're going to revise the proposal to Mass CEC to explain that, and that is going to go. I'm, I'm going to be submitting a new proposal to, to Guy and also to a Mass CEC, and we will give you a copy of that next Tuesday, so you'll be able to see how that is being, how that breakdown occurs with time and hours and all of that stuff, you know. <clears throat> Will that proposal have any impact on the amount of the grant? No, it should not, because what we are telling Mass CEC is that um, basically we are going to take out the equalization basin, and we, it's now is a two-year project we are proposing. Now it's a one-year project, because Mass CEC is demanding one year, not two years. So we're going to do only the aeration basin we, in six months' time, or five to six months' time from the start of the project, we'll be in the water and then we will take six months to do data analytics and evaluate the energy consumption, evaluate the nutrient concentrations, collect the data, analyze the data, so that, because they want to see, uh, you know, the data coming out of this plant while the plant is running and so on and so on. So all that will be documented so we can then, they can sort of use that as a basis of going to other plants and saying, okay, you can save this much energy and so on and so on. So that's the whole idea, sorry. <laughs> Right. <laughs> Doing. So, this was the total cost, and this is the cost. No, our cost is more our than that. Our cost is 166, well, that's what Yeah, your cost is only 166 out of this thing. Yeah. Oh, okay. Because 150k is coming from the Mass CEC grant. So it's going to cost us 166. Right. Yeah, well, on the next slide, yeah. 160, here, right here, 16346 is going to cost you because there's mass CC grant money coming into. We're counting for that in this in this analysis. Didn't I see another slide that had over 500,000? Yeah, that's the total project cost. What that is is the, is the equipment cost, this 293346, plus the cost of time, hourly rate, and all that built into the project because mass CC wants not just the equipment cost, but the installation cost, the labor cost. The design engineering cost, the all of that. The added design up. engineering cost, excuse me, is that we have to submit to the DEP. Yes. Because it's a modification, so we have to send, we have to set a uh, side of plans, get them a copy of the plans. It has to be monitored, so there's a lot of design factor to it. So it's more than the 166. No, they're picking up the cost of all the design. Oh, they are. We are contributing that cost. All that. Oh. That's how we're getting 29%. Is, is that because we're here becomes a test taste, uh, test? No, the, re the reason we are contributing our own time and, and energy into the Mass CEC grant is because basically by doing this, we're going to demonstrate, you know, through real-time analysis of the plant that uh, you, you, all the energy that we have done, for example, in the lagoon that we have shown and all the uh, analysis that, uh, that was done by the American Society of Civil Engineers when applied to a real process, actually the savings is so much, it could be higher than what we are saying, but, but that's the real savings. So that documents it in a real plant situation. So application you to where, your point, application. Where did you, why did you select Wareham? Well, the reason we selected Wareham is because when we applied to Mass CC, the, the Mass CC grant was the driving force, and that has to be applied in the state, in the state itself. But why so. not another town? Yeah, I can, I can um, answer that because, uh, you know, I was instrumental in reaching out, but really it's a testament to Guy. Like, it's, it's Guy understanding the technology, it's Guy understanding what the needs were, and there's a lot of people I talk to on a daily basis, and they just don't get it. Guy was somebody that I have, was able to have a conversation with, and he got it right away. So um, it's really a testament to Guy of why we're here in Wareham. So if this is implemented, we will have a lot of visitors. Uh, yeah, if you'll take them. I mean, I think there'll be a lot of people that'll be interested to see, um, you know, the the results. We can charge. We sell tickets. Hmm? We'll sell tickets. And, and, the, and the other reason why Wareham is a good location is because you are limited by nitrogen limits right now. That's what limits the amount of wastewater you can treat. So your plant can do 1.5 MGD, but you're running at less than 1 MGD because your nitrogen limits are being exceeded. So by taking the nutrients down, you can increase throughput. But that's exactly what this does. So this is a good demonstration that by treating nutrients, you're not only putting less nutrients in Buzzard Bay, which is a requirement of any environmental you know, protectionism, but also you're going to 
be able to run the process at a higher flow rate. And that is one of the advantages. Then you can you know, hook up more houses or whatever. You know? So there, there is more potential to treat wastewater in the same plant. You don't have to put any more plants here. You know? So that, that's exactly what we are, this technology can do. So it's a good demonstration of this technology. Thank you. So am I correct that the, the bottom line cost installed up and running everything necessary Goodbye, go home. Is one sixty six three forty six from your from Wareham? Yes. From Wareham, yeah. The total cost is five eighty four. Yeah. To us. Yeah. No, yeah, but we we only have to shell out the one sixty six to three forty six. That's all we're interested in. Is what we have to shell out. Exactly. Yes. And that's for that's for installation. Right. Well, we have what we have done is that in the in the total cost analysis, if you look at the detailed budget, which you know it was there, we have included uh, seventeen thousand dollars for installation of the uh, of the aeration system. The footballs don't require much installation except you have to just uh, you know do chuck a little. Them. Yeah, well, chuck them in. The, but the, you know, as the guy was saying, that there's a baffle, and then we have to put a a, a plastic screen on top so the footballs can't jump over. Uh, in case the flow goes up or whatever, whatever, so that way prevents the football from going into the pipelines. You know, so that's the whole reason because the line coming out is much bigger than the football. So, but that's the only modification really. So it's very minimal. And we added that modification because of the last nor'easters raised that level so high. So we had to yeah. make the adjustment. So if that happens again, we don't lose the meteor. Well, I was thinking about putting targets on the water and have people throwing the footballs to see <laughs> who hits it first. Never mind. I was just. Uh, that's, that's, a, that's a fundraiser. That's, that's a fundraiser. That's a good idea. We actually put a football in the water, and to your point earlier, the, the biomass was tremendous, but it couldn't be sustained because it couldn't get enough oxygen. Oxygen, yes. yes. That's the main thing. Now you see these uh, footballs are coated with your magic juice. Yes. Whatever it is. Yes. Does that wear out? No, so what else? Yeah. Um, deteriorate? Uh, so, so let me explain what that does, actually. So... The way, uh, you know, if you look at bacteria, I mean, the, 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 there are about 50 or 100 species of bacteria. There's not single species, okay? So when you look at these 100 species of bacteria that exist n by nature in wastewater systems, the, when they see a media inside the water, any surface inside the water, whether it's a piece of glass or whether it's uh, whatever it is, then they send out a chemical signal to all the other bacteria, not just their own species, but all other species. And all of the bacteria get informed that there is a media out here. And then they try to travel along the line of lowering of higher concentration, and that's how they find where the media is. So they look at concentration, and they can, they can sense the concentration. So they basically try to move towards the media in this case. So what we did was we came up with a synthetic analog of that chemical that the bacteria produces, and we coat the football with it. So this is not a dangerous chemical, it's not toxic, it's just a, a natural thing that's produced by bacteria, we're just simply putting an analog of that on the, on the media. So when the football goes in, it sends a message out to all the bacteria, hey, there's a media out here. And all the bacteria get the message, they all try to travel towards the football, they cling onto the football, they start growing very rapidly, which is why the football gets coated in about less than you know, four or five hours. And then the bacteria produces its own signal, naturally. And that's what they do for a living. So then they send their own signal out, saying, hey, we are sitting here, come and join the party. And then other bacteria starts coming towards the city. And that's how the bacteria comes and finds a football in this, in this mass of water that you've got. So basically, all we have done is we have put the initial signal out. Then you don't need any more chemical, because now the bacteria is putting out its own signals. They do the job that we are doing. The only reason we do that first is because we want to tell everybody that there is media here. So we, have, we don't have software that could talk to each other like that. Well, so we have actually hacked, we have hacked their chemical communication signals. It's like a huge picnic. It's a huge picnic, exactly. So it's like, you know, it's like we go to some place, we find a, a party going on, we call all our friends and say, hey, come along here. Well, here, we are actually sending the signal out ourselves, initially. And then we don't have to do anymore because the bacteria does that Take automatically it. on it. Yeah. But all it does is it allows the football to get coated in less than four or five hours, so it's working from the very start. You're not waiting for months for the biomass to grow, and even when the biomass grows at the time, it's not really a complete coverage. We get a complete coverage, and that's why when, when a guy put the football in, in, the, in the water, it got coated very quickly, and now it grew and grew and grew, and now it's weighing eight, nine pounds. You know? 
as yeah. opposed to the... It, it, it regenerates itself. It, yeah, they, they grow and die, yeah, basically. It's an ecosystem, you know? So they, they grow and they die and they grow and they die, and basically. But, but, they, they, but essentially what it is is that you get so much more biomass in the system than you ever had before. Mm -hmm. I mean, eight, nine times more biomass. And you are getting treatment from the biomass, and it's living, it's breathing, mm -hmm. because you're putting dissolved oxygen. Good. And it's removing night nutrients at the same time. That's how it functions. Guy, if we go for this system, do we have the money, and where would it come from? Capital. Capital? So we could move until October. Tell meeting. Mm -hmm. We have it? Yes. Oh, yeah. We have it. Even after the outlay for the um, lining of the line from Swiss to Narrows, we still have it. Yes. And how much more capacity can we take in? About. Well, that's a hard question, but you look at the loading if it's if it's five times the biomedia in theory, because loading is. It's what comes into the plant for food, that's the mm -hmm. flow, and the bacteria is what eats it. So if we increase the amount of bacteria, then we can increase the flow, which is concentration. Yeah. So the plant can do two million, period. That's what it's designed to do, max. And so the goal is to get to that two million. And I believe this technology will get us there. And we'll be 100% sure with this one test, because then we gotta multiply by three for the other two aeration bases, but absolutely. The numbers are staggering. And I saw it with the meteor, it was incredible. It weighed about eight pounds, we put it in, it doesn't, it just it staggered us, and under the microscope, you could see the life, and it was just, it's incredible. It's incredible, and you also get a nitrification denitrification because of the meteor itself. Within internally, the, the uh, denitrifiers are there uh, because they don't they don't they can't get as much air. So it's 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 a phenomenal process. It's not a new process, but this particular biomedia is what's new, yeah. not the not the concept. The guy, you there was a comment um, about nitrogen. Isn't our nitrogen level way down anyhow? Point two is what we're averaging. Yes. That's good. So it's consistency, absolutely, it's consistency. So the, there's two questions for me, is if I can lower that even more, I can increase my loading. However, if I can continue to put out 2.2 and increase my flow to 2, to 2 million gallons a day instead of 1.5, I gain capacity. And the biomedia is going to get me there. So I look at, can I take more in okay, so it's and not maintain gonna, the it, same? At the, at, the, at the moment, nitrogen isn't our problem that we're concerned about as much. Capacity is my biggest capacity. Is capacity. Is so this is going to maintain the nitrogen and potential of lowering it, but it's going to maintain the nitrogen, but give us the 2 million capacity of the plant. So that would be nice numbers. But to we're use. still limited by what we're able to outflow. The 1.56. However, we can put out more if the nutrients are lower. So, it, so the loading to the facility is if I'm taking in, I'm sorry, you passed. Let's say I'm taking 300 pounds of nutrients of food now, and I'm doing it, I'm doing my 2.2, and I'm getting the 1.56 to the river. If I take in, uh, f if I have 500 pounds come in, I increase my media to 500 pounds, and I get the same numbers. So it doesn't change, but I can bring in more product, if that makes sense. So for me, the concept is the more developments, more product comes in at me, gotcha. more loading comes in at me. The, and but results is not going to affect. It's going to be the same ratio of nutrients and loading in pounds per day that's allowed in that river. So we can bring in more because of the, this more media. How is this going to impact, help us on a smell level if we have it? It's, a matter of fact, it should lower it. But mm -hmm. our really issue was not the aeration basins. You've right. got like a musty smell. Our issue was the equalizing basins. That's raw sewer. And so the fear was because to make this work in the equalizing basins, we've got to bring the water up quite a bit. Mm -hmm. And so that initial whole concept is going to blow the neighbors out. We had a pretty good year last year because right. we watch it every day. And so for us to to win back the faith of the neighbors was pretty important to us because we really worked hard for that. But to do something that's going to take all that good grace away is, is scary to me and to, and to the neighbors. So there's just no sense in, in entering into that zone. So that's why we're going to continue to do, wash the basin every day, keep it empty every now, day. Is this, is this, but is this uh, something we would back into and do at a future date? Are we trying to back to the aeration, the equalizing basin? Yeah. I would like to back into it maybe in the dead of the winter or something because then you know there's less impact of odors because it's gonna be that initial blast that's gonna rock the world. If I do it in the middle of the summer, it just is not gonna go over well. Yeah. Yeah. Now, will these, do, do these balls, are they infe affected by weather, by 
That's the other interesting thing because we no. believe it's not, and they don't believe it is. And so no, they're not. My no. other fee, and this is the other part that we don't talk about. Our permit, we're we're doing. Uh, a, a six month permit now, April to, to October. Historically, the weather's been getting warm and the EPA is suggesting that they're gonna extend our permit time. So if they take us to November, maybe into December, I've gotta have some assurance that I can make it. EPA believes because the concept is, is if we put nutrients to the river, is it active? Is plant life still growing? Is things still happening to uptake that night nutrients? And they're saying yes. They're saying that October it's happening because of the weather change. They're saying November it's happening and that gets me a little concerned because it'll extend my permit. So if that ever is to happen, I want to have a technology that I can answer. What would be the timeline to install this thing? Yeah, if you take the 330% there, put the dates on those. So the dates are basically, we have to go to DP right now and get the approval. DP is, as the guy mentioned, is gonna take uh, 90 days. They can consume 90 days to approve it. Mm -hmm. That's a maximum time. If they have any questions during those 90 days, it'll extend beyond 90 days. But we are hoping that when we submit the information to DEP, it's, it's detailed enough and we have answered all the questions, then they will, the maximum time they'll take is 90 days. So 90 days is three months from now. Once we get DEP approval, let's say in the worst case, 90 days from now, if they, September. If that's September, October. So if we, start, if we start the project in September, October time period, now Mass CC wants the project for one year, and they will kick in about the same time, right? So they're kicking about uh, October. October, October of this year. So online? No, uh, Mass CEC was going to fund it and say, okay, this is project start date because Mass CEC has the same budget cycle we have. This is in the 2019 budget, which starts July 1, so they can do the same process. There's, a, there's a, a, a contract process, so that doesn't happen. Contracts don't happen in government overnight, so it takes a, it's a process. So when, they looked, when I looked at the original contract, they said a start date of October. Yeah. So the li every, all the all the alignment of the funding, the CEC and the DEP is lining up around October, September, October. And oh, okay, when's it online? Uh, but I would say to you, uh, if we fund everything in October, I would suggest end of October, beginning of November, it's online. By the first of the year. Absolutely no. Uh, so November, six, so November. sixty days installation time frame. Well, yes, it, it basically it, uh, two to three months. Uh, I mean, right now we are, we are, in fact, for this project, how many footballs do we need for this project? Uh, it'd be 15,000. 15,000. Right now we are manufacturing 65,000 for another project. I mean, we have a project from the, uh, from Campbell's Soup, where we are manufacturing footballs for them. So we are making 65,000 footballs for them, and we will be delivering that in about three months' time. So this is only 15,000 footballs here we're talking about. So we can get it done within two, three months' time from the time it starts, and then the rest of the time within the one-year project will be spent in analyzing the data and, and collecting you know, information for energy savings and all that stuff. You know. Where is the manufacturing taking place? We manufacture these in uh, the plastic cage that you see outside mm -hmm. is manufactured in Calgary, Canada. And then the foam piece is manufactured in Lexington, Kentucky. So the plastic pieces are made in Calgary. They're shipped in halves by truck to Lexington, and then they are, the football is then assembled there, and then they go to wherever they have to go. Thank you. So between relining our pipes and installing this, we should have a lot more capacity. capacity. Which is good. What's the chances of the town meeting not approving the capital expenditure? I don't see that as an issue. But just asking the question. Yeah. No, I just I don't see that I don't see that as an issue. First of all, we're not looking. We're not, we're not looking for ten million more. <laughs> so, I think that that by itself will help. Side question. Yeah. Uh, when you're showing about the home units. Yes. Yeah. Huh? Uh, would that football system that you have work in present septic systems, home septic systems? Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the problem with the home septic system right now they don't have the oxygen. The, is that they have no aeration system right now, gotcha. and they are just not equipped to so do any treatment. So the footballs aren't worth anything in that without the aeration. Yeah, and, and so what we are doing is our technology now is implemented. Think of it like a, you have a tank, 
and you have a leach field, the leach field has failed, let's suppose, and the tank is there, the tank is good, let's say, so it's got no holes in it and everything is fine. So we, uh, we are manufacturing our technology in a box that you put on the side of the house. You connect that to your existing tank, and then the water that comes out is, is clear and can go into the leach field and open up the leach field, for example. So this box that we are creating that and put on the side of the house is independent of the tank. So if your tank is round or rectangular or nine feet deep or whatever it is, we can retrofit it. And so that is the, the design that we've got. So we are actually going after the retrofit market because there's a huge retrofit market sitting there. Right now, all other suppliers that make you know, a similar system like this, they want to replace your septic tank. So you have to dig it out and, or crush it, whatever, put a new system in place, and then, and then go with that. We can work with the existing tank because out of the two million tanks, the system that have failed in the U.S., all of them are the leach field. Not the tank is good. Mm -hmm. The leach field is gone. That's the problem. So we, our design is a little bit different. We are, we are really producing a design that fits it. So if you have a system that, let's say, you've got a system that's not doing a very good job, your leach field is clogged, and you have no place to go, and you want to open up the leach field, you just put this box on the side of the house. We connect with a PVC pipe to your existing tank. Then the water that comes out is clear. And then you put it on the existing leach field. You use the same pipes, and everything is the same there, as long as the pipes are clear. And then basically, the water goes in the leach field. It percolates down. There's nothing in the water. So the bugs eat up the clog, and your leach field opens up. What do these cost? And so the, this Seven. box that we're talking about, if you don't have any ozone, because you need the ozone for this going on soil, is $16,000. And installation, so you're talking twenty to twenty-one thousand dollars. No, the installation, the that's installation that's of four thousand is only if you change the tank. Oh, oh, yeah. oh okay. So the, the installation oh, okay. is probably under a thousand dollars now because all you're doing is connecting the PVC pipes. That's all. Oh, okay. And keep in mind, we're talking about suing more of the town. Well, and that's right, that's exactly what I'm where I'm thinking. And now we have IA systems that get down to nineteen parts per million. If we can have a septic system gets down to the below the four, then we can clean up without doing deep digs, uh, big pump stations. We can actually, if it's $16,000, people are paying 18 They're plus thousand betterments. So for that cost, yeah. we do the same program, but we do decentralized. Mm -hmm. the, pro the system has the ability to send out wirelessly to us how it's operating if something was to fail. The motors are good, the pumps are good for eight years. The, um, the, the um, ozone, you, I mean, the, in the back of it, there's a filter, you, it's cleanable. I mean, the incredibleness for me of the decentralization and continue to sue at the time right. at a tremendous savings is, is, is phenomenal. Because we'll never get to some of these errors. No, never, never get to them. Especially Shangri-La Now, area now area. that's, that's on a household unit. House. That's what I'm talking about. What about I mean, this is maybe off the wall. This 40B product that we're going to get stuffed down our throat. It could be applied to something like that also. Could we make them pick up the cost of putting I, it in? I cannot because it's not available. So you got to do with present technology there in testing. So to say to somebody, put something in that's not available is, is just the, not something I can do. I would recommend it to anybody to do because then it becomes By the time they get feet. it built, maybe it will be. Yeah, I, 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 I don't. I, I'd like, but I can't go there. But to your to your point, when somebody wants to come in town to a development, we can say, yeah, this because this becomes part of the treatment facility. This becomes sewer, and this is what you'll do in that area because it's decentralized. And instead of me running this huge pipe down there, you put this system here, and it maintains because where the whole process of sewering is to protect the bay and, and to bring it back. And this system does that. So that's and the, that's it's potential of having a development occur on land that's not reachable by sewer, absolutely. like Westfield. Absolutely, mm -hmm. never get there. Absolutely, exactly. and maybe four or five years down the road, there becomes something in Westfield with this attached to it. You don't have to run the sewer line down Charlotte Furnace. You know what I'm saying? So the, the potential is incredible. It's incredible yeah. to do decentralized and to get the same goals accomplished in a whole different way. What do you estimate your time frame is to get potential acceptance uh, from the state? So uh, we talked to George. This George Hausfelder runs the testing facility in Wareham here. That's where That's they. Mayor, correct me if it's, it's actually at Otis Air Force Base. Yeah. Otis Air Force Base. Yeah, on the Air Force Base, right? Yes. So basically, um, he was suggesting that there is a mechanism in the state where we can actually um, apply to get these units installed even before we get the NSF. And so we're gonna go through the route, and he suggested a person to call, we're meeting that person tomorrow morning, 
at 8.30 before we leave uh, in the afternoon. And we will try to get the system in the state through that route mm -hmm. because the, in this state, NSF is not the controlling mechanism. Other southern states, NSF is fine. But in this state, they say that NSF is not enough. There are other ways that you can get in and get your unit installed. They might give you experimental approval for 15 units, which you can sell mm -hmm. and, and collect the data from those units, show them it works. I mean, we have data for 30 units where the, uh, the nitrogen levels, the ammonia levels are less than four milligrams a liter. So basically we have the data, but that's, you know, they want that collected here, so that's fine. We can collect the data over 15, 20 units, and then they'll allow us to, to sell these. So we're not controlled by NSF in this state as much as uh, in other states where they want NSF, otherwise nothing, you know, kind of approach. So we can get into the state sooner than seven months. Right through. Six, seven months. They pulled development. Oh, yeah. I mean, we've got a bunch of them around this town that, 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 I, that would be ideal. They haven't dug ground yet, but yeah. approved. Right. Yeah, so there's a mechanism by which the state allows you to come in as long as there are people who are willing to take this technology and put them, and they're willing to pay for it, and whether we are gonna sell the 15 units, then the data's collected and, you know, so basically that's the mechanism by which we can get in. In so. most IA systems, say they've gone to the provisional, and when you're talking about the provisional. Yeah, provisional. And the provisional means you have to do a lot more testing doing that and then prove it out. So all the IA systems that we have now have gone through that process. And so as they go through the process, they become approved, the stages, and then it's okay, yeah, great, now you do whatever you want. So. Now has there been any discussion with the Board of Health because they're the ones that approve the uh, septic systems. No, I haven't. I was waiting to get some, once they get installed and get it going, okay. I would bring the Board of Health involved and say, okay, here's what we have. Because they're the ones that can say yay or nay. Well, they're, they're, they're However, I'm gonna be very blunt. If we, <coughs> this is, you know, shooting, but if we assume responsibility of all septic tanks in Warham under this uh, under the sewer, so if we're going to go to an area, let's say West Warham, we assume our responsibility, and instead of saying a $15,000 betterment to put lines, then the betterment becomes $15,000 to put the new septic system, and it'll be controlled by the sewer department. So there'll be a fee annual, so that's we can maintain them, and we got the provisions to see them. So it becomes part of the sewer system. And so For the big... Big areas. I was thinking the the ones or twosies that might come up because they're trying to sell. They have cesspools and it failed. Then you have to put in that nitrogen system. So somewhere down the line, this could be an, an alternative yeah, if the board of uh, the um, board, of board of health accepts it. But some places will never get to it, so it's never been valuable. No, so you have to so the ones exactly. these, yeah. And the new the, the new nitrogen systems that they're putting in, nobody's monitoring them. No. They're not monitored, and this has a, me a mechanism that they're monitored. So yeah. for everybody that's win because they're monitored constantly, it, it meets everybody's requirements. I know that. I've had to put in several. Yeah. There's some out there. There's no monitoring whatsoever. So, so the good thing is that the future of the of the you know centralized treatment uh, facility like WPCF is not just to run the centralized treatment plant, but to mo keep the eyes on all of the decentralized systems that are going there right. for an annual fee because right. it can talk to you wirelessly. So now you know what's going on. If a pump has failed, you will then replace the pump, but the homeowner is paying every year to your to your WPCF for that service. And so you have a handle on the service, but you don't have a sewer line connection. Mm -hmm. So you're doing a job for these, all these yeah. homes, but you're not get, running around every day to see how they're doing. You're actually monitoring it from a distance, and that's centralized monitoring. In your designing of the individual systems right now, yes. are you including the provision for talking oh, back to the main sewer plant? Yes, oh. wirelessly, wirelessly, yes. Without, without, without any hardware system. Right. system. Yeah, exactly. Is that all included as part of the Yes, package? that's included in our system. So so right now, for example, we installed a system at an RV park. In, in a, this is in Kentucky now. An RV park, uh, we installed our system there, and it relays information, you know, at, you know, to the owners who are not basically sitting there. So they can monitor the system at a distance, and if anything happens, they can go there and replace the pump or whatever that ha what is happening but they are physically not there. They're running the RV park, but they can see the system from a, di from a distance, you know? So that's the benefit. And this would be the same system that would apply to? Yeah, yeah, same system, so yeah, same here. system. Yeah. Okay. So we have installed the system at a golf course uh, in, in Ohio, a very prestigious golf course uh, in Ohio. We, are, we have installed one in RV parks course. and in homes, so all of that is there, yes. 
for example, in a house, you can sit anywhere inside the house and there's a box that you can plug in anywhere in the house, in a bedroom or whatever, and it'll relay what the system is doing behind the house. There's no wire connecting this to that, but it's wirelessly coming into your house and you can put it wherever you want. If you're in the kitchen, you can plug in the kitchen. It'll tell you if the septic system is still working or not. You go to sleep in the bedroom, you can plug in there. So wherever you plug it in, it's just basically talking to you from a distance. So that's the benefit, you know. Well, is there any other place in the state of Mass that you're looking to put this in, or is this it? We are looking at, uh, you know, not, not in this state. We're looking at uh, Long Island, New York, which has got 300,000 septic tanks, out of which more than 60% have failed. Yeah. So this is a prob bigger problem there as yeah. well. Suffolk Butter County. Buttermilk Bay, Mayor, Plymouth. So this may answer that. Again, we talked about the expansion. This may answer a lot of, a lot of, right. a lot of questions yeah. and a lot of uh, needs. Right. at a reasonable price. You look at IA system reporting now, um, they're greater than $17,000, and they don't only get the 19 milligrams per liter. So we're paying a lot more money for less treatment. Exactly. Yeah. Well, I, I for one. So what's, what's our next step? We have to go to town meeting now? Well, I would, first step now is to, I would suggest if I can get the permission from the board to move forward, adopt the process, and then we can move forward with the CEC grant, DEP application, and then we can go to the town meeting, and everything's got to be contingent upon funding. I, I make That's a motion just, that we, we give you guys the authorization to proceed forward with this project. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, I'm gonna abstain because there's another system out there that I think I, we should look at, at least get an input on. That's, that and, and we've got two others we're looking at. Yeah. One is a wood chip. We've, the Wood Soul Institute has, has approached us. They wanna take our effluent. That's at two, averaging two PPM. They believe they can get it down to less than one. So they apply for the same CEC grant. We've authored, we said that we would partake in that. Also, there's a group from China that he said he's got a system. It's like a, a, it's a batch reactor. And he says he thinking he, he can get it down less than one. So we're open to that too. Uh, but I haven't seen the actual, I don't know if they got the grants and, and the guy, you know, the guy from China said he walked in and do it all for zip. So I, I, I you know, I, but nothing's on paper, nothing's real. Well, that's, uh, yeah, that's the whole thing. This is real. This is real. And, and uh, however, comma, uh, uh, being the beta test site, uh, I'm concerned about the amount of dollars that we'd have to front. Uh, I think that's, uh, if this was a, a system that was already accepted in place everywhere, available, no hangups with the state, et cetera, uh, and no proving to have to be done, uh, to the state, then I, I think we're talking another set of animals. Than well, the we technology right the moment. is not the issue. Anytime you do yeah. something in the treatment plant, I have to go through a process. It's called modification. So that's the DEP. The technology is there. They use it in Rhode Island. As that, far what as I'm saying, it's not approved yet, is it? Has Mass rubber stamped this? Can we? Yes, do Mass has there? rubber stamped the, the biomedia. Biomedia, okay. They've rubber, they've rubber stamped that. But when you're talking about modifying your system, you have to get DEP approved. I just can't arbitrarily change the process. So we're changing the process. So I've got to go to the DEP, oh, okay. submit everything, okay. and they can say, yes, yeah. do this, do that, because I don't have the authority just to simply change something. And the other technology that want to come, like the guy from China, it's not been tested anywhere. So he's doing a total guinea pig thing. He's willing to pay for it because he has it nowhere. And the guy in, in down the Cape, uh, the Woods Hole, that's doing the wood chips, has n it's never been done. So they're doing a sky in the pie, hoping it works. It may work, but there's no guarantee because it's been done nowhere. Now you so. have, you, you, you have a majority. Yeah, you we're all set. You can, we're, you're all set. We're all set, but I just wanted to explain to okay, yeah, the no, chairman. Okay, it was a little, obviously I was a little confused on that particular issue, so thank you. The Chinese system, so I'll go what I'll, is that? I will, I'm no, in favor no, of it. call it a batch mm -hmm. reactor. I, don't, I haven't seen it. He sent us a letter, said he'd like to get permission from us. He applied for the CEC, and yep. they said he needed a site, and they suggested they call us. 
And so I said, <laughs> yeah, show it. So he hasn't, he's supposed to be here in May. Well, May's cranking along and I haven't seen him yet. And oh, this is May? This is May. Sure, May's, it doesn't feel like it outside. I'm telling you, and it's halfway through. And so that's, All right. That's as, as far as our sludge reduction. I missed something. We can reduce it 30% this way. Mm -hmm. How much can we reduce it with the screw press or the centrifuge? Well, we're going from, and I've got, the, I'll give you those that report. We're, I think I did, but I'll reset it in a minute. We're going from 5% to 22%, so we're increasing it by 17%. Uh, and I have a dollar factor, I don't have it with me, but there's a dollar number to it, substantial. With so remember, if we do that, we continue with the screw press, we got less to press. So that's, I haven't added this concept to that concept either. No, no, no. Leave, <laughs> compare the, the, the three different systems. How much will we reduce our sludge with just the screw press? Uh, 522, uh, 17%. I mean, you're not going to reduce the sludge with it. You're going to reduce compress the, handle, uh, handle uh, handle it handle differently. the water, we're reduce the handling. We're going to take more water out. So you're not going to reduce the sludge. All you're going to oh, do is You're going to reduce back. the cost. I think he's going by you're disposal. Going to yeah, we're going to reduce the cost on the disposal. Oh, the disposal. We're going to reduce the cost by 17%. 17%. Because we're not going to have the water. Okay, but it's That's we're reducing the cost by 17%. What about with the centrifuge? Centrifuge is, is lower. It's going to be around 15%, 14%. So that's why we didn't do the centrifuge. So this is our best system as far as the sludge reduction goes? It's because the sludge okay. stays in the tank, doesn't come out, okay. it doesn't clarifiers, and it doesn't have to be processed. That's now, right. the sludge and the screw press will do nothing for our rotor control? No. Okay. Yeah, it might spread it. And, and we don't have any statistics on the Chinese system? So we have nothing. That's Trump to get it. What's the me. screw press cost? Oh gosh, I think it's four hundred thousand dollars. How much? Four hundred thousand dollars. That's American. And the centrifuge? To install it's about eight hundred thousand. Then to install it's about eight hundred thousand. You got to pipe it, retrofit. There's a lot of work, and you got to redo the tank. It's, 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 so it's about, I think it's about a one point two million dollar investment for screw press. So this is the best system financially as well? At the moment. I mean, it's uh, without having any further information on the Chinese one, yeah. It's by a, lot, by a long shot. Yeah, but the, 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 that, if we have no information and there's been no testing, that's years away, obviously. Right. Not if we're the beta site. You mean if we're the beta site, we don't have to go through approvals? We just have to be the approver? I, I don't know how that works. <laughs> well, I'm new to this country. Mr. Chairman, yes, if I may, I want to move into, right I wanted to report to you that we met with the Department of Transport, Department of Could, DOT, Department of Transportation. Yeah, they're, they're good. The they're good. Yeah. Done? Thank okay. you. Thank, Thank you, you very you. much. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much, gentlemen. I appreciate it. Thank you. Appreciate your time. We want you to get to your morning meeting. Okay. <laughs> The, the uh, Department of Transportation over the rail. And they said that, yeah, we can use the rail. However, we got to drive pilings and put a wall the entire length of the rail. We believe it's going to be cost prohibitive. We'll look at the numbers, but we think it's going to be millions. So that's the step. So we're also looking at um, tunneling from here to Mass Maritime. But because that was at a meeting, they said, yes, because they get, the engineers were there and they said because of the loading of the tracks and everything we're trying to accomplish, we could actually drive piling down alongside the track and put a pipe on the other side of the piling. So before we could put the pipe, we got to be piling the entire length of the rail. Then come back and put the pipe. That wouldn't. So it's pretty staggering. Yeah, the cost it was is. pretty staggering. So um, that's where we are with the Department of Transportation and using the rail. And, mm -hmm. and part of their, clear, uh, their concern was they're going to increase the, the uh, traffic. They talked about the Buzz's Bay, they talked about this, but the traffic's gonna get such that their fear a, a, a train <coughs> derailment. And so this would have to assure them by putting the wall, we assure them, uh, they're sure that the Thank tracks. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. And not only that, we gotta monitor the, the, the rail. We gotta set up um, lasers and monitor the rails for any movement whatsoever, and that's gotta be done daily. So the costs just become super, super out of sight. So, uh, so they're really adding the cost up. Yeah, they are, they, and, and, this is, and their concerns are legitimate because it's been done in other places, and there's been derailments because of shifting the ground. And so they have legitimate concerns, but my God, the, the cost is just out there. 
yeah. is out there. So we're looking. So we are. We in micro tunnel was one of ours. The other one was groundwater discharge uh, to up around the. We already talked to the water department. We could discharge it in their well in there to recharge. So we have all alternatives that we're looking at. Six and twenty-eight. We just believe there's so many utilities in six and twenty-eight that the digging's very slow. So that's going to drive that cost up. Mm -hmm. um, so th there, we're looking at all the alternatives. But the rail has just became more expensive than we imagined. Yeah. I Would the Crazy. Talking about piping it to some place, so uh, from some place. Good to be true, it is good to be true. The piping wouldn't affect for discharge on uh, for groundwater discharge. That wouldn't affect Route Six, tw six and Twenty Eight. No, at all. So we would discharge so up that to would the. Make, uh, all I'm getting at, guys, with the with the work theoretically being done on Six and Twenty Eight, was that a tie-in? potential if item we, we were going to if we were going to actually dig up six and twenty eight mm -hmm. to put a pipe in then we try to coordinate it with that if we if yeah. that's but, with, but, but this, after analysis because that we know that's going to be costly also when we yeah. first started this we knew it was going to be costly per foot because of all you got to do to mm -hmm. put a trench box down the middle of that road and go through every piece of utility crossing that road is labor intense okay in boston the cost of a mile is triple and, and sometimes quadruple because to do it safely you got to you got to put a tr trench box in or you got to shore it and you can only go small increments so but we, we we're going to put a number to it because we have to to do our due diligence we have to put a number to everything <coughs> cost analysis for everything and we 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 approached the water district about discharging there so that would just be running the pipe up to their, their whatever their wells are and just throw it on the ground let it go into the water table recharge the water table we're looking at that too so I just want to report that we had a meeting Tuesday. She, Chalita came down, and it was grace of her. She came down, and and her engineers and consultants, and we had this powwow. So that is one alternative: create a new pond for swimming. Absolutely. You know, we 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 don't understand, and I and I hate to say it that way, but um, water is becoming precious. Oh, we I understand. Mean precious. When I read something that South Africa, I believe that in South Africa there's a town, I forget the city, I'm not so sure. Johannesburg. With 400, with 4 million people and no water. water. Right. And no water. Yeah. It staggers, it staggers me. India, they're talking about California. They're watching the ground sink because we're taking out so much water, we can't put it back fast enough. We've been doing that in Florida for a long time. And so we're really. Sinkholes. You know, sinkholes. So we're really, we don't, under, we, Probably don't appreciate anything, but we don't understand how valuable. Without water, life ceases. That's because we've got cranberry bogs. That's it, why. it ceases. It, there's, without water, there's no life. You go, right. you can't go more than a few days, three or four days without consuming water. That's it. That's right. life. And so this is becoming a precious commodity. Well, it's too bad. It's too bad people didn't all take that into consideration because this is this message has been coming for 30, 40 years. It's become, but nobody listens hardly. Well, we believe that it's not going to happen in my lifetime. It's not going to be my problem, and that's the nature. Yeah, it's down the road. I'm not going to worry about that. Get the can down the road. You just, it's not a big deal. And then one day it manifests like, oh, my God, where'd that come from? And that's just the nature of the beast. And who knows? So I say, well, I'm 65, right? So yeah, it's another 20 years. I ain't going to be here. What's the big deal? So why am I going to worry about it? Let somebody else worry about it. That's just a common mentality. It's just something you can't change. Okay. Has there been any discussion about Hathaway? Hathaway? I, I, I appreciate, appreciate that. Board to get that. Has there been any discussion around Hathaway? No. What happened? No. So what Hathaway? Hathaway, um, we had a. I've got tons of pictures. I'll share them with you. Well, I, you had shared. <laughs> I've got plenty of pictures. But um, Hathaway, Hathaway, they the I think it was beaten property. They sold it to somebody else, and they're putting two houses beyond Tim's Point. And, yep. and this board's approved the process. We gave them permission, and they took it for their own expense. So while they were digging this trench, they got the main pipe in, they got the uh, manholes in, they're good, now they gotta bring it to the property. Excuse me. So there was a marking, and I didn't wanna get into that, but they mocked utilities in theory, so, and they were mocked. But anyways, they came across, they hit a pipe, they thought it was water, it was drainage, went past the gas, we've cleared everything that was mocked, we're good. And they reached in and they grabbed the 16 inch water main. <coughs> It flooded, I mean, literally, when I came on site, I couldn't see Hathaway Street. It was gone. It was gone. It was that much water. Mm -hmm. if, I got pictures. If you, when they got the backhoe down, that arm is gone. So now we have two open six-inch lines, 
and that water is just pouring into our system. Our pump is running like crazy. It surcharged the entire area, the entire area. We lost about 500 gallons into the river because it came up on 2nd Street, came out and went right to the catch basin. But it's about 40 minutes and it's very little because the lids are bolted down. But it took the wet well because there's no place to go and raised that wet well, wet well at Hathaway to levels we've never seen before. Never. It took six hours to pump it down to a normal level. So it was overwhelmed. It backed up at Rose Point. And in the water side, that, that, the, to the tower dropped 20 feet. So you can only imagine the pressure went. Mm -hmm. The fire department was freaking out because now all of a sudden you have no hydrants available. Yeah. They're gone. And they said it affected probably half the town. So that's all going on. So it was a crazy, crazy, crazy night. A lot of concerns. And so some lessons for us is when we do, I'm adding to our policy, when we do a connection, then you must isolate from an active system. So what they would do in the future, we'll put a plug in what's active and you can do what you want, but you can't connect it to an active until it, to the final part we'll pull the plug. So it'll never come to us again. So if this was to happen, if we had done that, then it would just flood the road mm. and it wouldn't have flooded us out. So that's what we learned for us. Did systems. we flood any residents? No residents. I walked, I drove. I talked to the residents. Other than water pressure, they weren't flooded. They no, didn't have no. an impact with the No overflow. impact as to yet. No impact. No issue on the first and second street. It all went down the sewer, the uh, stormwater drains. Second street went down the stormwater drain. So I had to. So I called uh, the EPA, DEP, and Marine Fisheries, and we sent them all reports of what happened. And now the dilution factor is, is arbitrary because we got surcharged with all water, potable water. But because it's in the sanitary sewer system, I cannot say it's potable water anymore, obviously. So the, the, the discharge of the river was very minimal in itself, but the dilution made it even less of an mm -hmm. impact. Now, there was a house on First Street, which is really ironic, because First Street discharged at the man manhole, and it just went to the guy's front yard, never made it to the river. Um, the way it was graded, it just packed in front of his, his yard, but it had no, and like he said, I just thought it was uh, rainwater or water because there was no smell to it. It was, it was just really super diluted. So that, for, it was also a saving grace. I mean, you don't want that type of surcharge, but because it was potable water, if you're going to have a surcharge, I guess potable water is the way to go. So who pays for this, all this? Contractor. He has insurance to cover it? Uh, yes, he does. Why we, ha we make them carry a uh, 5,000 bond, a $1 million of liability, yeah. so before they can even do a job. That's good. So I thought he had a, a safe dig number. Yeah, everything dig safe. But again, let's get, uh, the reality is you're relying on human beings to mock something. Gas company tells you, we'll give you what it is, but you've got to kind of, you know, it could be three feet this way, it could be, that's the, that's the business. That's the business. When the water, model, well, the water was mocked out, and so the marking, they passed the marking, which in reality was the drainage pipe. So they, they mean the comfort, they, they conscious, oh, we're good. And that false insecurity, and they wail, and ooh, what's that? It was crazy. It was crazy. Oh, I wouldn't want to have to. Marking out an inexact science because, oh. you know, it's really, it's because you're, you're going by plan. So what we're trying to get better at is as builts. So the, better. the only good thing about it is we got the Hathaway plant nice and clean? It's clean. I tell you, the <laughs> lines, everything is flushed out. We put a camera in. We camera it all day to, to see our impact. Always very little sand. It flushed everything out. When so I guess that's lemons. a good thing. Exactly. <laughs> I guess that's Always a good a thing. Always a plus. Yeah, it's a good thing. So we and gained we didn't get too much sand, so we didn't damage the pumps. Nope. We're excited about that. We really that's, were. That's we, terrific, yes. We camera the whole area today. We're like, wow, we were just, because we, I expected to see silt everywhere yeah and stones and we were really nervous about that but no nope, no impact whatsoever and we were pretty pleased with that but yeah pure water pure water it was crazy sure yep yes uh, donna i make a motion to adjourn second all in favor aye, aye. adjourning uh, 805 thank you